Day one of next-gen testing has been complete at Phoenix. Eric Omrol speaks on his future past 2023, and Jimmy Johnson's crew chief for 2023 has been revealed. What's going, guys? It's Daniel, and welcome back to our video. We got some NASCAR and other motorsports story discussed today on the channel. Let's go ahead and just jump straight on those really, really quickly. Let's first talk about Jeff Gordon. As Jeff Gordon later this evening is going to appear on Fallon tonight. This is really, really exciting to see that Jeff Gordon is going to be on Fallon tonight. Of course, Jeff Gordon has been in New York the last couple of days. I wonder if maybe we see some other guests from NASCAR, like maybe Chase Elliott, perhaps, get an opportunity to be on Fallon tonight. We'll see what happens, but if you're really looking forward to that, I hope people do tune into that, and it's really good to see that Jeff Gordon is going to be on that, and it's definitely really, really exciting for sure. And now we're going to hedge up on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Brad Keselowski. As if you've been at the test recently, you've probably seen this. Brad Keselowski is running a Ken Block tribute at the Phoenix test. They did an excellent and a really incredible job on this Ken Block tribute. I think it looks really, really exciting. I think it looks really good. And I think they did a really great job on this Ken Block tribute. It's a really nice tribute to Ken Block and it looks really, really good. And really excited, in my opinion. It looks really good, and I think they did an excellent and a great job on this, in my honest opinion. And now we're going to head on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Legacy Motor Club. As some of their crew chiefs have been announced, and there's been some announcements in regards to the team. First, Dave Ellens has signed a multi-year extension to crew chief the number 43 car through the 2025 season. This is really good news if you're an Eric Jones fan because this means that Eric Jones could get a multi-year extension to be with Dave Ellens for the next couple of years. Dave Ellens, in my opinion, has been a very, very solid crew chief over the last couple of years. He, of course, has won championships in the NASCAR Xfinity Series as a crew chief and I think he's a really excellent crew chief. He did a really good job and it's really helped that 43 team become really strong over the last couple of years. And this is really positive news for Eric Jones because while Eric Jones does have a multi-year deal with Petty GMS or Legacy Motor Club now, it really is unclear at this point if how long Eric Jones is going to stay. And there's been some talk that there's been rumors about SHR could be a possibility. So we're just going to have to wait and see what happens. But glad to say that Dave Ellens is going to be the crew chief. On that same day and at the same time, it was announced that Todd Gordon is going to crew chief for Jimmy Johnson in select races in 2023. Along with Jimmy Johnson basically not having a lot of experience with the next-gen car, Todd Gordon has not had a lot of experience with the next-gen car. The last time Todd Gordon crew chief in the Cup Series, I believe, was in 2021, and that was for Ryan Blaney. Todd Gordon is one of the best crew chiefs in NASCAR history. He won the Daytona 500 in 2015. He also went on to win the championship with Joey Logano in 2018. It helped Ryan Blaney score a couple of victories in the Cup Series in 2021. So I'm expecting Todd Gordon to do a really good job this year as a crew chief with Jimmy Johnson. And I'm going to tell you what, would not shock or surprise if Jimmy Johnson does end up winning that poll for the 2023 Daytona 500. I know this sounds crazy to say, but I think with Todd Gordon being on the helm of the box, I think it's going to really help Jimmy Johnson have an opportunity to win that poll. And I think Jimmy Johnson does have a really good chance. So I think Jimmy Johnson's got a good shot to win the poll. And we'll see what happens. But I think he's got a really good chance to win the poll in 2023 for the Daytona 500. And now we're going to head to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Casey Mears. Now, Cole K Kusimura, who was at the Action Test and NASCAR reporter, reported that Casey Mears is actually spotted at the upcoming, at this current Next Gen test that was going on. Now, Casey Mears did have an interview recently with Casey Campbell a couple months ago, and Casey Mears did say to Casey that he did say that he really would love to be able to have maybe a one-off start or come back to NASCAR in a race. Maybe Casey's talking about running the 84 car for Petty GMS, or Legacy Motor Club now. Obviously, Casey Mears has not raced in NASCAR really full-time in the last couple of years. The last time I think he raced full-time was 2016 when he drove the number 13 car for Jermaine Racing, which they're no longer around. It would be real exciting for Casey Mears to come back. I don't know how well he would perform because it's been about, I think the last time Casey raced in NASCAR in general was 2019. So it's been a bit since Casey has raced. But I think it would regardless be really exciting and great if Casey did get an opportunity to race in NASCAR once again. So I hope he does get an opportunity to come back because it would be exciting. Maybe he runs an Xfinity Series race or maybe he runs with Legacy Motor Club. Who knows at this point, but I hope he does get an opportunity. It would be exciting regardless, and I hope he does get an opportunity to race maybe in the next-gen era and gets an opportunity to race with maybe the next-gen car with Legacy Motor Club. I think it would be really exciting. 
And now we're going to go ahead and jump on to the next story of today's episode as we're talking about Jimmy Johnson. Now, Jimmy Johnson was at the Next Gen Test very recently, and he says it's the schedule is not set yet for 2023 and what races he's going to run. He says more than likely the deal to go IndyCar run the double because he's had interest in maybe running the double. That sounds like it's unfortunately currently out the window at the moment. It sounds like it's unlikely to happen at this point, and he's still hoping to run the Garage 56 entry. Now, outside of the Daytona 500 and Biff Carvana only sponsoring that race at the moment, it's unclear what the rest of Jimmy's schedule is going to be. Now, Jimmy did mention and said that that schedule and basically his schedule for that is going to be announced in the not-so-distant future. So probably in the coming days and weeks, we're likely going to know what's going on with Jimmy Johnson for the 2023 season and what races he exactly is going to run. I would think he's going to try to run the Coke 600. That's one race I would think he would run. Another race that I would think that could be a major possibility is, of course, maybe running the Chicago Street Course race. I know he's shown some interest in maybe running that race. He's not going to run at Phoenix because, of course, since he's testing at Phoenix, he won't be allowed to run at Phoenix later this year. Maybe comes back to Worldwide Technology Raceway and races there. We'll see what other races that Jimmy decides to run. But I think it's just incredible to see that Jimmy Johnson is coming back. His expectations are not going to be really high, in my opinion. I don't think they should be really high. Because I'm not expecting Jimmy to set the world on fire. Because, again, he hasn't raced much in the next-gen car. He just got his first laps in the next-gen car yesterday. And when we back behind the wheel, I know there's other races that Jimmy does want to run, though. North Wilkes is a race that does come to mind. He's mentioned that in the past. We'll see what Jimmy's schedule is going to look like in the future, but regardless, I think it is exciting that Jimmy is showing interest in racing, and we'll see what he ends up doing, but Jimmy's showing interest in racing once again, and we'll see if he does decide to race in the future and get an opportunity to race not too far down the road. And now we're going ahead and jump on to the first of two major stories in today's episode as we are talking about Eric Amarola. Now, Eric Amarola was speaking to Bob Pockers very recently, basically at the media day and production days not too long ago last week. And Eric Amarola said he spoke on the future past 2023. And one of the quotes that was very interesting was he says, we'll see where everything shakes out. Now, Eric Amarola did mention that he actually almost did retire in 2022. Around my birthday last year in 2022, he actually initially announced retirement. But later in the year, in the summer months, Eric Amarola basically changed his mind and started changing his mind. He spoke to his family and returned for 2023. Now, Bob did ask about the comments that Gene Haas made in October about him potentially retiring because Gene Haas said back in October that he said he not only could lose Kevin Harvick, which Kevin Harvick, of course, is going to retire at the end of the 2023 season. We already know that at this point. But Gene Haas did say that there is a possibility that we could also see Eric Amarola retire at the end of the 2023 season. And as Eric said just a minute ago, we'll see where everything shakes out. I'm going to say this. I think Eric Amarola could have a little bit of a down year this year. I'm expecting Eric Amarola's performance to dip just a little bit in 2023. But the big question right now is, will Eric Amarola actually retire at the end of the 2023 season? I'll be honest with you. I think there's as much of a chance he does retire as he does not retire at the end of the season. Because Eric Amarola is a very interesting. Eric Amarola is, I think, will be 39 at the end of the 2023 season. So he definitely is a little, he's getting a little bit older now. And he's getting up there in age. And is one of the oldest full-time NASCAR Cup Series drivers at the moment. But a lot of it's also going to depend on Smithfield. One of the reasons I think Eric Amarola did return for 2023 and did not retire officially is because Smithfield really wanted to come back. And if Smithfield had left, that would have been a lot of money that they would have lost and someone would have had to come in and take over. There were rumors that maybe Ryan Priest and John Hunter was initially going to take that ride. But one of the reasons it, that he came back is because Smithfield was likely going to leave and he did speak to his family and his family was okay with him returning. If you want my honest and truthful opinion at this moment, I think it's 50-50 that he does return. If he doesn't return, though, who takes over the ride? You do have a couple candidates that could be very possible. One of them is Riley Herbst. Riley Herbst currently drives the number 98 car in the Xfinity Series for Stuart Haas Racing. Is running that car once again. There's rumors and rumors at the moment that he may run the Daytona 500 with Rick Ware Racing, but apparently Rick Ware did say at the Roar that there's a possibility that he could drive that. They might be giving him some cup starts with that team, though that isn't an SHR-affiliated car anymore. They might be giving him some starts in that car because, of course, you know he basically is in SHR lineup at the moment, and, of course, he wants, they're going to get him prepared and run all the super speedway races. 
Another crazy possibility is maybe Haley Deegan. Now, I know it sounds crazy to say because I don't think Haley Deegan's even close to being ready for Cup, but Ford is going to want to move her up as quick as possible. And will Haley want to make that jump? I don't think they're going to want to. I would think they want to go with somebody else, but she is a possibility. And then you think about other possible free agents. What about Zane Smith? Zane Smith's a Ford driver, and I think Zane Smith is really, actually right now at this moment, the best Ford driver in the development program at the moment. He would be a really strong replacement for Eric Amarola. What about John Hunter Nemechek? His name's been brought up in conversations. I know Jordan Bianchi talked about this as a possibility for the four car next year. What if he goes to the 10 car instead of the four car? Everyone initially thought that John Hunter Nemechek was actually going to take over for Eric Amarola in 2023, but that kind of fell through and Eric decided to return. I think Eric Amarola's future is going to be one of the most interesting, and it's really interesting to see what's going to happen with the team. I know they're going to want to keep him around, and Eric will decide his future pass. I think there's a good chance he does return, but if he doesn't return, it would not shock me or surprise me if we see someone outside of the Ford development camp come in, like an Alex Bowman perhaps. Who knows at this point, but we'll see what the future sacks up for that team. And now we're going to go ahead and jump on to the final major story of today's episode as we're talking about the first day of the next-gen test at Phoenix. As you're probably watching this video at the moment, day two of the next-gen test is currently going on at the moment. The reason that they're having a next-gen test is to try to fix the short track package. If you watched the racing last year in 2022, the intermediate racing and the bigger tracks put on really, really good shows. However, the short track racing and the road course racing, which is the racing that we thought was going to be really good with the next-gen car, ended up actually being the worst type of racing. Now, there were good races that were on the short track package. I thought the second Marzal race was actually pretty solid, but the first Marzal race was terrible. I thought Bristol was okay, but it wasn't fantastic. It was very difficult to pass, and it wasn't the greatest race, but it was a better race. I think some people really gave credit, and nutrition really, really helped. But especially with Phoenix being a short track type of race, you got to make the racing really, really good. So they've been testing some things. In day one, they actually tested a smaller spoiler. They actually dropped the spoiler from four inches to two and a half inches, which is, I think, what the spoiler used to be with the old Gen 6 cars on the short track. So that's really good. And another thing that is being planned to test is mufflers. Mufflers have been in the conversations that I've seen a lot of people talking about it on social media about mufflers. A lot of people worry about mufflers are going to make the cars much, much quieter. Here's what I'll say about mufflers. I, under, I don't want every track to have mufflers around, but if it's just for the LA Clash and the Chicago Street Course, I'm definitely okay with it. However, I will say this about the next-gen car. I was at Gateway last year. I know Gateway is not like a short track, but... Gate, I was at Gateway last year, and the cars were really, really loud. I was there in person, and the cars were extremely loud. But they sounded really good because of the exhaust pipes on the sides are making the cars much louder. So they're only talking about dropping it from 6 to 8 decibels. So if they're only dropping it a few decibels, which will help hearing, I can understand why they're going to do that. But as of right now, they're only plan to be run at the Clash. And it's really just, they're still going to have the loud sound and the V8 sound, but that's the only thing that's changing. They also tested a different underwing, extended the diffuser strikes downward as well. They tried a different underwing maybe to get a little more downforce in the bottom of the car and basically keep not as much drag on the back. And they extended the diffuser strikes downward as well. It's one thing they were testing yesterday. Now, after the test, drivers said it didn't make much of a difference with the underwing and the diffuser strikes downward. They did say it's the right direction, but even drivers like Joey Logano suggested that maybe we shouldn't even have no spoiler on the back of the car. Could you imagine no spoiler on the back of the car? That would absolutely be insane, but honestly, I'm definitely for that as well. And Joey Logano also even suggested that we should run higher horsepower in the car as well and less drag in the car. And I think every comment that Joey Logano said from day one of the test 100% spot on. I think that if we had really less spoiler on the back, it would create less of that basically dirty air on the back of the car, which is one of the biggest issues. And let's cut the splitter while we're at it as well. But that's one thing I would love to change the splitter as well, cutting that splitter down just a little bit as well. But I would love for them to basically take away and cut off that spoiler as well and also increase the horsepower. I really think that we should get the horsepower back up around 750 to 800 horsepower. I know the Gen 4 cars ran under horsepower, and we saw great racing with both the Gen 4 car and even some of the Gen 5 car with higher horsepower as well. I think 670 horsepower needs to stay where it's at for like the intermediate races because 
The intermediate racing last year was on point. But this test is super important because it's going to be really important for the future of these short track races and road course races. And the drivers said it was the right direction, which is a good thing because if we can get the sport in the right direction, I think that's going to be better for everybody. But we need to continue to see the direction of NASCAR get better. So I am good to see that there's at least a positive direction going at the moment right now. But to be honest with you, I hope we continue to head toward that direction to fix these problems. So we'll see what happens down the road, and we'll see how successful it is. But I'm glad to see that the sport is kind of headed toward the right direction when it comes to the next-gen car, and we'll see what happens. So that is going to be for today's NASCAR news video. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel, notifications on, so you know if I when a video does go live on my channel. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and support me on Patreon as well. Links are below over that, and comment below your thoughts below of today's video. What other changes do you want to see on the next-gen car for upcoming tests? Let me know in the comments below. And do you think Eric Omrol will actually retire at the end of 2023 or not? Let me know in the comments below. Tomorrow on my channel, we're likely going to talk about the second day of the next-gen test and any other NASCAR news that I did not talk about in today's episode. I'm probably going to push to tomorrow's video. Friday will also likely be another NASCAR news video. Saturday and Sunday, not entirely sure what's going to drop on the channel. We'll have Actually, this weekend is the Rolex 24, so we've been talking about that this weekend, but there might be a special video on Saturday. There's other content on the way. We're getting close to the start of the season. We're about a week and a half away, and I cannot wait for the start of the season. So anyway, like I said, I want to thank you guys for watching today's episode, and I'll see you guys next time for some more great, awesome NASCAR content and other motorsports content on the channel like this. Take care, everybody.